Someday, in the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. It's the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, December 2nd. I'm James Spann. A challenging, wet forecast ahead, complete with a mild spell at midweek. Shallow air, very cold air by the weekend. Somebody getting some ice across the Mid-South, maybe late in the weekend. Who gets it? Uh, it's going to be a tough forecast. We'll a lot to talk about, so let's go right to it. We'll begin as we do during the morning hours with the water vapor satellite view across the nation this morning. And uh, first off, a little wave coming through here, producing some light rain. You can see that disturbance up over British Columbia, and that's going to be pulling down some really cold air. I mean, brutally cold air over in the northern states, historic maybe in some ways. And the problem is it's just not going to blow in here at one time. It's going to seep in here this weekend in a very shallow form, as you'll see. Starting off the day in the mid-40s and low-50s around here, numbers range from 45 at Fort Payne to 51 at Tuscaloosa. I think that Gadsden number is bogus up there. It's got 61. And we'll probably stay in the 50s all day with clouds and some light rain at times. There's a look at the numbers around the nation this morning. And uh, the really cold air is not here yet. It will be coming down into uh, uh, Montana and the Dakotas initially tomorrow night and Wednesday. And we will certainly be watching that uh, cold air with great interest. Up north, it's a mess. Winter storm warnings up for much of Montana, parts of Idaho, North Dakota, Minnesota, and it's just going to be, uh, it's, it's a mess up there. They're going to be, we're going to see some minus 30s up there, I think, by uh, Thursday morning after the snow, and uh, uh, again, that, that cold air is very heavy, and it's going to move. Even if the upper pattern doesn't seem to favor it, it's going to move. It might be shallow. It's like dumping out a big bag of sand, and it's kind of shallow around the edges as it spreads out. Convective outlooks. Look at this now. This is day three, which is Wednesday. There's no formal risk, but they do indicate a chance of thunderstorms on Wednesday from East Texas up to about Memphis and uh, parts of Kentucky and southern Indiana. I don't think we have any severe weather, but uh, just maybe somebody will hear some thunder as the cold air pushes south. This is the rain for the next five days, so this carries us through Saturday morning at 6 o'clock, and it's got the bigger numbers just north of here. Uh, the bullseye's 3.7 inches between Muscle Shoals and Memphis. And it's going to be wet. Uh, I mean, we're going to have a hard time finding the sun around here for at least the next seven days. And this is the chance of snow accumulating today, greater than one inch, and obviously the numbers are huge up north where they're going to be in a uh, brutally cold and wintry mess up there for a while. Okay, this is where we are today. This is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, valid at 12 noon today. And this is at 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet up. Little energy is uh, rotating through here. And uh, down below that, you can see uh, evidence of a little moisture. And let's look at the high-res NAM. And it's got maybe a little light rain. Uh, and this is actually valid this evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, it's not going to rain a lot today, but it's going to rain at times. It's going to be light. So just be aware of the chance of light rain at times today and tonight. We'll be cloudy and we'll stay on the 50s all day. Now, tomorrow, uh, the models are not showing much in the way of rain. This is the high res NAM valid at uh, 12 noon tomorrow. Doesn't show a lot. Uh, I think the day will be mostly cloudy. We start to warm up. The uh, thickness levels are suggesting we'll see upper 60s tomorrow. As temperatures go above average for the first time in a long time. So clouds, and again, I can't rule out the chance of a sprinkle somewhere tomorrow, a little bit of light rain, but probably not much. Now, this is Wednesday, and you can see the deal. We've got one surface low over the Great Lakes with a trailing cold front coming down and uh, another deep low forming around the four corners. It, it's just all kind of trouble written over this thing here for parts of the United States. And very cold air coming down the pike of 1,034 millibar high that is moving down into Washington state. But uh, on Wednesday, there could be some showers. Now, this is the high res name. And again, it doesn't show a lot here on on Wednesday. But I think we need to mention a chance of some light rain, cloudy, and it's going to be very mild. We'll be in the 70s. Uh, the GFS is printing 73. The NAM 
is printing 76 degrees. So all of a sudden, you're going to think, uh, hey, is this December or is this like uh, April or something here? Uh, so very mild on Wednesday, and quite frankly, Thursday will be too. This is the upper look on Thursday, and you can see how things are evolving. A big, deep trough in the west. We've got an upper high over the gulf, and down below that, cold air continues to seep southward. Uh, and again, around here, it looks like a mild and showery day on Thursday. Good chance we'll see highs in the 70s, probably low to mid-70s, clouds with occasional showers, with the southwest flow aloft. Um, and again, uh, out there in uh, Oklahoma and North Texas, that could be pretty messy. These are temperatures at midday Thursday, and you can see how that cold air just ever so close to us. Um and uh, these would actually be lows Thursday morning, but that cold front is near the northwestern corner of the state, and the numbers up in the you know northern states kind of speak for themselves. They're you know minus ten to minus twenty up there, uh, but our friends in Oklahoma and Texas could begin to see some icing problems. Now let's go to Friday, um, and co the cold air dives down into Texas. The uh, cold air should begin to seep in here on Friday, and I, I think. And let me just say up front, the numbers you see coming off the models, the model output statistics, if you'd like to use those numbers, they're going to be worthless uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They will not be able to handle the shallow nature of the cold air as it moves in here. It's only going to be, you know, one, 2,000 feet deep. Uh, but you can clearly see what's happening there Friday, evidence of uh, uh, icing, uh, maybe sleet, freezing rain, and then snow back in the colder air for parts of Oklahoma, North Texas, Arkansas, Southern Missouri, Western Tennessee. Uh, that's a that's and this could be really messy. And if it comes down as freezing rain, that's the worst kind. Raining when temperatures are colder than 32. Everything turns to ice. It coats trees with ice and power lines with ice, and that's when the you know power outages, ice storms are just rotten. They are no good. But again, for our friends in Dallas. Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Little Rock, Memphis, Cape Girardeau, Paducah, Kentucky. Uh, Friday could be a big icy mess. So be aware if you're traveling in that zone. But again, here, Friday should be a rainy day and it's going to turn cold. And there's going to be a huge thermal contrast for people up around the shoals. They could stay in the 30s all day. But if you're down in like Montgomery, you could see a high in the 60s. And that's why there's going to be a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth. And at this stage of the game, we can't tell you exactly where that uh, tight gradient's going to be. Now, this is Saturday as we start the weekend. We've still got big troughing in the west, and we've still got a southwest flow aloft here. And down below that, shallow cold air begins to move in. Uh, I think clearly we don't get out of the 40s for Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Anniston, Gadsden, uh, some of her friends up in the Shoals. They'll, they won't get out of the 30s up there on Saturday. And again, with that disturbed flow, I still think it's going to be cloudy, and I still think we're going to see rain around, even though that's not showing that much on that grid. And again, back in Texas, you can see potential for icing and just nasty icing problems, uh, even south of Dallas, down toward Austin and Waco, uh, College Station, the Texas Hill Country, maybe as far south as San Antonio. So if you got a trip out there, be aware of that. Uh, there's a look at temperatures. Uh, these are uh, lows on Saturday morning, and uh, you can see teens down into Texas. I see minus 20s, almost minus 30s over Montana and North Dakota as the cold air deepens, and it just takes the, the whole nation in, in an icy grip. Now, this is Sunday, and again, the model is just showing rain for us on Sunday. Um, and again, we're going to play it that we're not going to go for any ice in our forecast now. It's just too early. We don't know that. A lot of snow in the cold air and evidence of icing problems down in the parts of North Carolina with a wedge going on here. you got a 1033 high over the northeast United States, cold air damming and icing problems, maybe down into South Carolina and maybe down into Georgia. I mean, this whole thing is just fraught with issues. And then this is Monday. The precipitation begins to wind down. But I think for us, if we have issues, it might be Sunday night or Monday morning. And that's a big if. And again, for now, we're not going to mention that. Uh, these are temperatures uh, early Monday morning, and we should be below freezing. Uh, this is a look at the uh, buff kit data, and you can see that uh, some models are indeed bringing in freezing rain here Sunday night and early Monday morning. Note that spike at the end of the graph down there. And again, we're not forecasting that now. We're just saying we're going to have to watch this. Uh, and again, if we do have any icing issues, the greater chance probably northwest Alabama, probably Sunday night or Monday morning. 
Just something to think about. We'll fine-tune that as we get closer. Uh, we'll go out there deeper into December. This is December 13th. Cold front, big rain event there. This is the end of the forecast, and this is December 17th. And uh, this is suggesting a little shortwave energy passing through with a chance of showers there. But obviously, this is the land of voodoo, and that might change. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes in the blog. Next video here by 4 o'clock today. If you can, catch us on ABC 3340 News this evening on the live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.